Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Densley. And I'm Dr. Cope. We're both dentists. So it's probably no secret that we love teeth. And we love helping our patients understand what's going on in their mouths. We'd like to take a few minutes today and explain the basics of dental x-rays. Every once in a while I'll have a patient tell me that they don't want x-rays taken because they don't want to risk radiation exposure. It's a legitimate concern and I would imagine most people would want to avoid excess radiation exposure. I mean, I'm not planning any vacations to Chernobyl or Fukushima anytime soon, but once you understand the basic mechanism of a dental x-ray machine and compare the amount of radiation from an x-ray to other sources of radiation, it just might set your mind at ease about getting a few extra x-rays taken at your next dental visit. This is a drawing of a dental x-ray unit. Inside the business end is a small plate of tungsten metal, the same metal used in drill bits and jewelry, and it's not radioactive. But when a powerful short burst of electricity is run through it, x-rays are produced. 99% of these x-rays are absorbed in lead, oil, and aluminum shields, while the remaining 1% is focused out of the tube toward your tooth. So how much radiation actually comes out? Well, about two microsieverts. Dr. Densley, the problem is not very many people know what a microsievert is. The way scientists quantify radiation just sounds kind of scary. I mean, there's rads and grays and sieverts and runchins, among others. Let's forget the names and simply compare dental x-ray radiation to other common things you probably encounter on a daily basis. This square represents one dental x-ray. The next square represents the normal amount of background radiation over a 24-hour period, just from being alive for one day. Next, we have the representation for eating two bananas a week for one year. It's true. Anytime you have naturally occurring phosphorus, like in bananas, there will be trace amounts of radioactive phosphorus. Now we start to pick up momentum with a flight from New York to Los Angeles. Flying high in an airplane, the atmosphere is thinner, which exposes passengers to a little more radiation than they would have gotten at sea level. That dose is dwarfed by the amount of natural radiation you get over one year from the phosphorus in your own body. Which looks tiny compared to this next massive dose of radiation. This represents the dose over one year which has been linked to an increased chance of getting cancer. If I had enough graphing paper, I would tape together a square as tall as a nine-story building which shows how much you'd have to take before you got a fatal dose of radiation. So in other words, you would need about 50,000 dental x-rays in one year to have the minimum amount for an increased chance of getting cancer. So getting a few dental x-rays a year is totally safe, and it helps your dentist find cavities before they get too big. Even so, we still have plenty of safety precautions, like having the assistant step out of the room while taking the picture, and heavy metal blankets to drape over you, which stops any wayward x-rays. So stop worrying about a few yearly dental x-rays. Just think that us dentists are around x-rays every working day of our lives, and we haven't had any mutations to speak of. Be sure to check out our other videos if you'd like a chance to know more about what happens in the dental office. And thanks for watching.